Let's dive into Anna's training so that way we can stay consistent at home. Whenever she is doing behaviors that we want to keep seeing, whether that is following our commands or just showing us calm behaviors that we want to keep seeing, we're going to reinforce and reward those behaviors with praise, petting, or treats. Then when she's doing things that we don't want to see, whether that's jumping up on us or getting on the counters or not following our commands, we're going to follow through with the training equipment so we can decrease her doing those behaviors. So let's go over Anna's training equipment. This is her prong collar. She's going to wear this whenever she is on a leash. The leash is going to attach to the D-ring that swivels. And then how we take this on and off of Anna is we're just going to secure one of the links and push it through like so. To put it back together, you're going to pinch this part of the prong and put it through the holes of the other prong. And then how we use this, say she is in the heel position. Heel just means walk next to me on a nice loose leash. Say she is starting to pull ahead. We're going to say no. Marking the incorrect behavior we don't want to see, give her a pop of the leash, and then remind her heel. So no, follow through, heel. And then when she gets back to where we want her and she's in the position that we're asking her to be, we can give her that reinforcement of the praise, petting, and treats. Now let's go over her e-collar. How we turn this on and off is there's a red dot on the collar and a red dot on the remote. We're going to touch these together. This green light means that the collar itself is on, charged, and ready to go. How we turn on the remote, on and off button on the back. We're going to push and hold until the screen lights up. You're going to see level 25 appear on the screen. This is Anna's working level. And then we're going to focus on the black S button today. S just stands for stimulation, so it's kind of like an electric muscle stimulator. So again, how we use this, say she's in the heel position. Heel's just that walk next to me on the nice loose leash. Say she's starting to pull ahead. We're going to say no, marking the incorrect behavior. Black S button, heel, no button, heel. And then depending on the level of distraction that Anna has, we may use one of these, we may use both of these. It depends on the situation that we are in. If we want to focus more on getting her into the off-leash behaviors and training, we're going to focus more on the remote collar than we are going to with the prong collar. With the remote collar, it's going to be the first thing that we put on Anna in the morning, and it's going to be the last thing that we take off at night, so that way we always have a form of communication with Anna throughout the day. With the prong collar, she may wear this in the house when we first introduce her back so we can set those boundaries with her. Once she understands the boundaries and all of the new rules that we have for her, we can fade away from having her wear the prong in the house. So that is all of Anna's training equipment. So let's go over her commands. I've already kind of gone over the heel. So whenever we take her out on walks, about 80 to 90% of the walk, we should put her in the heel command. And then about 10 to 20%, we can give her the release word free. Free means she's not in any set command, and that's her time to do her business and enjoy the walk and do her own thing. Now we have sit. Sit means stay as implied, so this is really good for those door manners. I know she had a problem with running through those doors. So now, whenever we approach a door, we're going to have Anna sit, whether it's inside or outside, so that way she doesn't have the option to run through the door. She has to stay in that sit until we give her that release word. So we'll have her sit. As we're opening the door, we're going to remind her sit because opening the door is that big distraction. So we'll remind her sit. If she stays gray, then we have two options. We can free her through the door or we can heal through the door with her. If she stays great, we can do that with her. If not, we're going to follow through and set the same boundaries that we have here at the facility at home. Because at home, she used to bolt through the doors and she kind of already has that in her mindset. So now we kind of have to set those new boundaries and rules with her whenever we do take her back home. So that way she's not rushing through doors. And because we don't want to ask her to sit seven times and then she finally sits on that seventh time. Now we have down. Down also means stay as implied. So with down, if we do a little distraction, say we put her in a down and we walk 10 feet away, we don't want to call her to us because then we're going to get her, reward her for coming to us and not staying in that down stay. So if we put her in a down and we're doing whatever we got to do, we're going to go back to Anna where she is at and we're going to release her from where she is. So that way she gets rewarded for staying in the down stay and not coming to us whenever we walk 10 feet away. Then with down, we're going to reward as low as possible so she knows that the positive zone is going to be low to the ground, so she stays in that down stay. Now we have place. Places that boundary stay that we can use when we have company coming over, so that way she isn't jumping up on our guest whenever we have people coming in the doorway, so we have a way to where she can experience everything and not be in the way of people coming in. With this, I would suggest putting the leash on her when you first try this out in the house and when guests come over, so that way we have a way to guide her back to the bed if she decides to get off of the bed. With this, same thing as down, we're not going to release her from a distance so she doesn't get rewarded for coming to us. We're going to go back to her and release her where she's at. Also, we're going to reward on that bed because the positive zone is that boundary she's on. So I want her to get that positive association with the bed. So we're going to reward on the bed. 
Now we have come when called. When you're first practicing this or when you practice this, I would put her on a 30 to 50 foot leash so that way if she gets extra distracted, because I do know that she likes those birds and squirrels and she likes to chase them. So if she gets extra distracted paying attention to them, we have a way to communicate with her and reel her back in if she doesn't respond to us when we ask her to come to us. So when we're practicing this, we'll let her get distracted because ideally when we need her to come back to us, it's when she's in that distracted state of mind. So let her get distracted, do her own thing. When we call her to us, we're gonna say it in a loud, firm tone. We're gonna praise her as she's coming to us. And then we're gonna have her sit. So that way, whenever she gets to us, she doesn't think that she can get the reward and run back off. We can give her the reward and then we can release her back into whatever she was doing. So say we ask her to come to us and she gets a little extra distracted and she's not paying attention to us. We're gonna say no, because we're gonna mark the incorrect behavior we don't wanna see. We're gonna follow through with our training equipment. So come, she doesn't, we're gonna say no black S button, come, and then we're still going to praise her for coming into our space because coming into our space is always going to be a positive. We never want to give her a follow through out here. And then when she gets to us, do the same thing because coming into our space is always going to be a positive because we want her to have that positive association with coming to us. So that is come when called. Now we have leave it. Leave it just means don't grab that. So whenever you first practice this, I would suggest using dog safe foods. Try tossing it on the ground, say leave it if she does great. If not, we're gonna follow through with our training equipment. So that way we decrease her wanting to pick things up off the floor when we drop it. I would suggest having the leash on her when we first start this. So if she does get a little crazy with it, we have a way to guide her around into different scenarios if we have to. And we have a way to communicate with her other than the remote collar. You can also practice this with all of the other things that she likes to pick up and eat, whether that's acorns or it's wood chips or any of that thing. So that is all of Anna's training equipment and commands. So we're gonna have fun, we're gonna stay consistent, and now Anna is gonna be doing her commands.
Down. Good girl. Good down. Down. Good down, Anna. Good down. Good down. Good down, Anna. Good down. Good. Down. Free. Good girl, Anna.
let's dive into the other features of the remote. So I know we've already gone over how to turn it on, but now let's go over how to turn it off. It's going to be the same concept as turning it on. We're going to touch these two red dots together. This is going to turn the collar off on its own. And then this on and off button on the back, we're going to push and hold just like we did to turn it on, but it takes a little bit longer to turn it off. So once the screen goes blank, it is off. Now let's go over the other buttons on the remote. We've already gone over the black S button, which is just the number you're going to see on the screen. Now let's go over this red S button. This is gonna be a boost feature for when Anna is doing something very dangerous, whether that is going after an animal and she's not responding to us whenever she is in that high adrenaline state of mind, or she's chasing the car and she's not responding to us and we need her to come back to us. So whenever we press this red S button, it's gonna jump her level, whatever level this screen is on to 25 levels. So right now it's on 25. It's going to jump it to 50. And this is just because we need a way to communicate with her whenever she is in that high adrenaline state of mind because level 25 reaches about here when nothing's really going on. But JC starts to chase a squirrel or something. She is up here. So we jump it up 25 levels so that way we can match her adrenaline and we can still communicate with her whenever she is doing something dangerous. Now we have a T button on the other side. This is a vibrate feature. We like to use this to make sure that the collar is on and working so that way when we put it on Kana, we know that it is ready to go and we can use it. So now say that level 25 isn't working for Anna, whether she's having too much of a reaction to it or you notice that she's not really reacting to it at all. We can change that by holding down on this dial, pushing down until the 1D at the top of the screen starts flashing, and then we can rotate it to whatever number we want. But Level 25 seems to be working for Anna right now, so I'm gonna rotate it back to level 25. How we lock this into place is we're gonna push back down on the dial until that 1D stops flashing. This is so we can put it in our pocket without accidentally rotating it and changing it to a different level. Now on the back of the thing, we have an M slash C button. This is a button that changes it from momentary or continuous. At the beginning of Anna's training, we started at a very low level at continuous, so that way we can introduce the remote in a positive way. And then we switch it over to momentary whenever she gets further into a training at a little bit of a higher level. And then this on and off button also works as a flashlight feature. If we press it once, it's going to be a flash. And then we press it twice, it's going to be a solid flashlight. Press it that third time, it turns it off. And then both the remote and the collar are chargeable. So we can, the charging port on the remote is right there. Charging port on the collar is underneath the prongs. They last for about 12 to 14 hour days or two days on 12 to 14 hour days. So if you charge it every other day, she should be fine. It will start blinking red and orange whenever it starts to get lower. So you know when you need to charge it. And then in the box, we have extra prongs. So if you notice that she gets, I know she doesn't have too long of hair now, but if you notice her prongs aren't making good contact with her skin, you can change her over to longer prongs. So that way we know she's making a good connection. If you notice that it's not, the charger is a dual charger, so you can charge both the remote and the collar at the same time. On the bottom of the box, there is a manual, so if you have any other questions, you can go through the manual if you can't figure out what other features of the collar you want to use. There is a two-year warranty on the remote and collar, so if you have any issues, you can contact the company and they should be able to get in touch with you. It's right here on the back of the box, all of their names and numbers to contact them if you're having any issues with the remote and collar. They also are waterproof, so if she gets it wet, not a big deal. I would just rotate the collar on her neck if she's gonna stay wet for an extended period of time, so that way it doesn't irritate one part of her neck with rubbing and being wet. But that is all of the other features of the remote, so we're gonna have fun and we're gonna stay consistent.